What I found most interesting was when he told us the story about a man called George and how he had three wives and all these children and how he could sell, he sold illegal, illegal alcohol and had a butcher's and a pub and a slaughter thing. They can find out so much information from just looking through at the ground and looking through different layers and just studying everything. So that's what I found really interesting. Well, we know, they told us that the houses always had really dense living, so there was always a large um, number of people living in one packed, really tiny house. And it was really disgusting, I guess. And like, the pee went through their house and stuff, like sewage. <laughs> So most of these sandstone blocks, there were convicts used to carve them out of the sandstone walls that were located around Sydney. And when they carved them out, they left their, because they couldn't read or write, they left their own distinctive marks on their blocks. And that way you could tell how many blocks they'd actually carved out. I think. So each one's a bit different, so these ones are dots, where these ones are short, sort of short lines. Apparently everyone is different and, the, and there's like a story that, every, that the captain um, that knew all the convicts could actually tell who which convict was who by just seeing the movie. So. Um, the lines in them and like different people's signatures to so you can tell like how many rocks they made. Yeah, yeah. like who did like which rock and stuff. And to stick them all together they used like lime. And oysters, they, they use yeah, they they shells. They use shells, which made wine. And, and, and women got blind from them. From the because the fumes were so toxic. Yeah. Um, to learn about Sydney's history and just to find out more information and become more familiar with the area. Find out more about like first English settlements because this was the first place in Australia that actually had. European settlement, so just to find out more about that kind of like what it was like back then, the living conditions and plague and everything. I really like the tours that we, we've had so far and yeah, I just like learning about all the interesting things. Yeah, I, I like going to the, do the tours and like going to the museum and actually like getting like quite up and close and personal with like everything. I think it's for like learning about how it was and soon the government's trying to set off the rocks so maybe let us learn a bit before it's all gone. Like, they call these rocks for a significant reason because when they first came there were a lot of big rocks on the hill and that's why I got the name, the, if you take that away then why would it be called the rocks? No one would know how small and cramped everything was back in the day and how like they've removed a lot of the stuff but when you compare pictures of now and then it's scary how much it's changed. Well, at the big dig we found that um, like this, all these like, outlines of houses and pubs and all that are still there and that they're still pretty much digging of it and finding like millions of little shrapnel or like plates or dolls or anything. Um, we found like pieces of bone, um, like dolls, uh, bottles, plates, uh, pretty much everything. Um, it affected uh, 103 people in uh, in all of Sydney, and surprisingly, around three people actually died in the rocks, and it was all blamed on the rocks uh, since it was a slum area. But... And it was really easily transmitted because of the sandstone around. Um, houses were really populated, and it was not very hygienic. Also, and but then they started hunting rats, um, which was came in the ships from Europe, I think, from the rats. And the, and, uh, the fleet became uh, a part of the two. Out of all 103 people who actually died from the plague um, in Sydney, only three of them were from the rocks, but yet yeah, um, they were all, was blamed all on the rocks because it was such a slum area back in the day, even though only three people actually died from the rocks. What I found fascinating was when we went to the big dig, they said that they found over 100, uh, a million artifacts just in that small area from different houses. That was really impressive. Uh, I really liked listening to the old people and listening to like how different their lives were. Like most of the people in our year play games or use their phones there for like the entire evening. 
They got to play as marbles yeah. and yeah. they yeah. Yeah. play yeah. seasonal sport, yeah. changes all the time. The atmosphere. Mm. They were, um... It was a big slum area before and like a long, long time ago, but now it's very, it's, it's a, it's a really high class neighborhood, like millions of dollars to, to live here. So, that's a good thing. Barangaroo. Well, Barangaroo apartments, they're, they're, being, oh, they're, okay. being, they're being evicted, they're just, they're, they're getting thrown out of their homes. Like, yes, they'll get new places, but it's not the same as these places they've lived for their entire lives and their grandparents and parents have lived for their entire lives. They don't get a choice, they're just told, you've got to move, that's it, it's really up there. To find out about such a great place and to find out about the his history of Sydney Cove slash Sydney Harbour. Yeah. I think it's good because we're um, we're not doing everyday school stuff. We're out here, you know, we're doing practical work in the real world, and it's not just uh, put in one small box. Where you know, getting involved in things that other kids in other schools don't get the opportunity to, and it's. It's a really good experience that we're given this. It might not be here in a couple of years. It'll be a completely, completely different place. And with only a couple, with a problem, with heritage buildings being taken over. And yeah, so, got to learn about it while we can. I'm going to be getting lots of photos and be making a before and after. And the photos will be showing before the project or building was made, like the Harbour Bridge. And it would be like a flipbook, for example, how it slowly goes through, and you can rapidly see the how it's slowly being built through until there's the final start, and see there'll be like different dates saying when, for example, like the play came through and stuff like that, and show um, when it started to slow down or when construction or something's broken during it. Um, I was in the, I was really interested in finding out about all of the natural Aboriginal remedies like before they have any modern technology or materials like they have certain plants that would um, that they could catch fish with and they'd have they'd find little natural gullies in the water where they could um, trap sea animals and it was really interested it was really interesting to find what they to find out about how they sort of did things before modern technology came I went to talk to the captain of the boat, which was Hughes Indigenous, and he was driving the boat. And I had a good talk with him, and uh, he talked to me about where he came from, and uh, the, na the Aboriginal nation where he came from, and uh, how how he got where he is now. And he told, him, he told me about how he was a sailor, and he went to the city to Hobart, and that was pretty. Uh, that was one of the best things I've done today. We found out how um, how the disease would spread around the rocks and what would happen if you got the disease and we learnt so many new interesting things and it was so great and it's so great for everyone's topic but it really extended everyone's knowledge. I enjoy going to the island and learning about the culture of the Aboriginals, seeing what their life was like before colonisation. Um, my, well, what stuck out the most for me probably was learning about the dances and getting to do them and also learning that all the dances actually had different meanings and did actually play a big part in traditional culture of Aboriginal people. Most of the plants on the island actually had a purpose, whether it was a good or a bad purpose, but they all had some sort of way to like, shine <laughs> in the Aboriginal people. Eyes, like whether it was a plant that helped fishing or a plant that scared people from other tribes away or whatever. Yeah, and there was some, <laughs> yeah, most of them, like, um, lots of the plants were used for fishing, so they would, like, use the plants and bash them against the water <laughs> until um, it started to foam, and then the foam from the plant would paralyze the fish, and then they could just go in and grab the fish from the pond or wherever they were fishing, which had to be like a cut off area. Which was cool, and um, they had these like blueberry things that made um, like it was called cotton mouth, and so then you couldn't do it properly. It felt weird. <laughs> the fact that this sort of whole week so far has given us a lot of independence, and um, 
especially because it's been put in house groups and everyone sort of, even though we're all good friends, like everyone sort of come together and um, making these documentaries especially, it's like everyone's like forced to put together something that everyone has to put their own opinion in on and everyone's working together to make it and I think sort of getting that a bit of freedom like even at lunch just to go around and work, you can work on your documentaries or you can explore the rocks a bit, I think it's cool getting to know the area a bit more. It's quite an important part of, of Australia of course to be culture and background like even just the smallest little things might put something massive together when at the big dig yesterday we found out that even the smallest, like tiniest piece of plate, broken plate, could put together something like a, a, a complete story, even just that tiny piece of information. Um, I think also a lot that it's important to know about the rock's history because at the moment it's sort of, I guess you could say, falling apart a bit with um, like um, the people in the serious building who are being kicked out, and I think it's important that everyone knows about that situation. And also that the rocks used to be a place that was really full of life and had heaps of children and like different age groups and everything and now it's sort of dying out a bit and I think everyone needs to know that what it has been and then that could be sort of put together to what it could be in the future as well. Uh, I think it's really important that um, most people in Sydney at least have an understanding of their own history about where they're from, where they've come from and how uh, the city that we live in now has evolved into the place that it's that it was from the place that it was and I think that learning about the plague and and um, and our and the fleas and and the people that it affected and the, the archaeological sites I really think that um, it will help us form an understanding of like what Sydney was and I think it will help us in the long run, understand Sydney like in a greater understanding than just the place and the city that we live in. How, how the um, plague was contracted between humans and, and between the fleas and the rats about how the bacteria from the rat, because when the flea takes the blood of the rat, the bacteria in the rat forms in the flea's stomach and then it vomits slowly, it clogs the stomach. So it makes the flea feel very hungry and and that's and that's why they feed on the humans. And then once they feed on the humans, they realise that they're not hungry and then they just vomit it out and that's how the plague's caught because it's the bacteria in the vomit of the flea that contracts the disease, not the rats. Because the bacteria in the rats doesn't contract it, it's the bacteria vomited out by